will love you more than anything. Hallelujah. Let's listen to our observations and watch our observations for Sunday, March the 28th, 2021. Will all members of First AB please update your contact information by clicking on the link attached to the FYI email. If you're not getting the FYI, please call the church office at 912-233-6597. If you are a member of First African Baptist Church and not a member of the FAB Church Federal Credit Union, please join. It's a great opportunity for you to save money, but it's a great opportunity also for you to get a loan. Please contact the FAB Church Federal Credit Union at fabc one at outlook.com on today at 2 p.m there will be the renaming of the street by the local 1414 longshoreman hall in honor of our own the late brother chester dunham for his 58 years of continuous service let us share with his family let us share with the longshoreman in celebrating this great man of god also today the NAACP mass meeting will be held online at 4 p.m. It'll be on Facebook Live. If you're not a member of the Savannah branch of the NAACP, please join. Please get in touch. We have a new president. The new president is our own attorney, Chad Mance. Following the NAACP mass meeting, the Community Education Committee of the Advocates for Restorative Communities of Savannah We'll have a round table discussion that's at 5.30 p.m. also on Facebook Live. So join us for that very, very informative meeting discussing how we can help advocates, how we all can be advocates for a restorative community right here in Savannah. The Evangelism Initiative Team will have their showcase on this Thursday April 1st at 6 30 p.m. The emphasis will be on Passion Week, which we're in the midst of right now. So join with us as we celebrate and as we prepare for the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. We also want to thank the Dr. Ethel P. Stokes Education Initiative team for their showcase on last Thursday, spotlighting Christian education, particularly here at First African Baptist Church. Please be aware that we will have the seven last words of Christ be held at, at Connors Temple Baptist Church, but we're having it on Good Friday, April the 2nd at 12 noon. Your pastor, me, TNT, and six other pastors and ministers will be sharing the seven last words. Please look for this on Facebook, even though they will be outside at Connors Temple Baptist Church. Also keep in mind as we prepare for First Sunday, our Resurrection Sunday, which is our Communion Sunday, please know that our deacons will distribute communion packets on Thursday, April the 1st, from 3.30 p.m. until 6 p.m. right at First African Baptist Church. Please join, please come by and get some pack communion packets for others who may not have theirs as well. Let me say, on behalf of the officers members and friends of First African Baptist Church, happy birthday to all of those, all of our members and others who were born in the month of March. March babies, we say happy birthday to you as we shout out and celebrate with you on this day. And we say a very special birthday shout out to the mother of First African Baptist Church, Mother Rebecca Wilson. Happy birthday. It is prayer time, church. Let us be in prayer for the world, our nation, and let's sure enough be in prayer for our state, where we've seen our governor and his Republican cohorts continue to their attack on our constitutional right to vote. Let's pray that God will move through his people to right the wrongs of so many who seek to oppress those who have less. We're going to pray that God will touch, move, and strengthen each of us, even in our local community that we can be exactly who God has called us to be. Let's pray for all of those who are still affected by COVID-19. We're asking that we would still, please, ma'am, please, sir, let's be in prayer. As we pray, we want to be in prayer for the family of Sister Elaine Wright Williamson. Let's keep that family in our prayers. 
We asked that we would be in prayer in a special way for Reverend Marco George and his family. Let's keep in our prayers also a request we have to pray for Tenno Young and their family. Let's be in prayer for Sister Sarah Herring, Sister Lily Evans, Sister Julia Rainey, Sister Hortense McMore, Sister Rochelle McMore Jefferson, Sister Rosa Brown, Brother Dean Washington, Sister Helen Braxton, Sister Vernell Smiley, Brother Rufus Johnson, Brother Charles Black, Pastor Matthew Southall Brown Sr., Sister Queen Bean, Sister Joanne Muzon, Sister Levesse Walker, Sister Mary Kennedy Stewart, Sister Bobby Austin, Sister Elizabeth Butler, Sister Carolyn Mars, Sister Diane Michael, Sister Natasha Garvin Holmes, Brother and Sister Sherman and Ruby Morris, Sister Charlotte Chisholm, Brother Jerome Williams, Sister Marion Dobson, Sister Willie Mae Stewart, Mother Rebecca Wilson, and again, happy birthday, Mother Wilson. Let's keep in our prayers also, Brother and Sister Jeffrey and Betty McMillian, Brother Femfong, Sister Bernice McKinney, Sister Stacy Nelson, Sister Donnie Lipsy, Sister Eloria Gilbert, Evangelist Ayetta Burden, Brother Russell Reynolds, Sister Rona Presley, Brother Jerome Washington, Sister Richard Dean Gresham, Sister Drusilla Bias, Brother Roosevelt Rouse, Brother Whitlinger, Brother Garland Howard, Sister Julia Johnson, Brother Douglas King, Sister Rachel Jones, Sister Adrian Braxton and family. Let us continue to be in prayer even for those whose names I may not have called, but we know stand in the need of prayer. Let's take time to pray with and for them as God continues to guide, lead, and direct us on this Palm Sunday. Let us pray. Gracious God, our Creator and Sustainer, our Redeemer and Deliverer, we come to you right now in the precious and powerful name of Jesus. We come humbly before you, thanking you for loving us, guiding us, keeping us, and being everything in our lives. Lord, we ask right now that you would touch us in such a mighty way that as you touch us, we will be touched to do the work you've called us to do for such a time as this. We pray, God, for our world. We pray for our nation. We pray for this, the state of Georgia. We pray for our communities, our county, our city, and all elected officials and those who are appointed. God, we pray that as you touch and direct us, that we will ever look unto you as the author and finisher of our faith. We pray for those who've been affected by COVID-19, those who are still recovering, those who have loved ones to go from labor to reward, we ask that you continue to comfort, guide, direct, bless, and keep them, and keep us all, God. As we realize we still need to wear our masks, as we realize we still need to wash our hands, as we realize we still need to keep a safe distance from one another, even with our masks. So we ask that you guide us, and we thank you for the vaccinations that are going through right now, as we urge everyone to, to get their vaccine as soon as they possibly can. We ask you to keep us now and strengthen us, God. Ever use us in a special way as we continue through this Passion Week, as we remember you marching into Jerusalem over palm branches, but then we also realize what happened on that Friday. But Lord, we ask you to keep us and strengthen us every day as we remember as tragic as Friday may have been, we thank God that Sunday is coming. We thank you that you love us so much that you gave your life that we could have life and have it more abundantly. So bless us on this day, God, as we seek to be a blessing unto others. Speak to us through the word of God as we hear your word on this day and as we prepare all this week to do the things you have us to do. Bless us all, God, and help us to be a blessing unto others. We pray for those who've been devastated by tornadoes and by all types of weather-related uh, incidents. We pray for those who've been involved in shootings, God, Oh, God, we ask you continue to be with those families and those who have been impacted in Atlanta, Georgia, also in Colorado, and others, God, even those right here in Savannah that have had violence in their families. Strengthen us, God, that we'll do the things you have us to do, that we can reach out to everyone so everyone can have Jesus. So bless us, guide us, and keep us, and we do give you all the praise, the honor, and the glory, because we love you, Jesus. 
We worship and adore you. Keep us and strengthen us now. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen.
I love you, Jesus. Woo. I worship and adore you. Wow. Lord, I love you more than anything. Listen to that. Just, just listen. I love you, Jesus. I love you more than anything. That's where we are today as we come to worship God in spirit and in truth and to hear the word of God. As God speaks to us, if we truly love him, we can be obedient to his word and do his will. Let's look at our scripture for this Sunday. This Palm Sunday, Luke chapter 6, verse 27 through 31. Jesus is speaking from the Sermon on the Mount. But I say to you who hear, love your enemies. Do good to those who hate you. Bless those who curse you. Pray for those who abuse you. To one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. Give to everyone who begs from you. And from one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Let us pray. God, our creator, sustainer, redeemer, we ask right now in a special way that you would speak to us. We, your servants, that as you speak to us, we would hear your words, but not just hear your words. We will obey. We will follow. We will do what you asked us to do the way you asked us to do it. Lord, we're focused we're leaning and depending upon you. Have your way in our lives. You are the part of we are but clay. Mold us and make us into what you would have us to be. As we're seeking you. As we're shaping lives. As we're serving the world. Speak now to us God. In Jesus name we pray. Amen. We have been dealing with this passage all of this month. And as we deal with it, we're doing our best to show you and to tell you and to share with you from the very words of Christ himself in the Sermon on the Mount. I know it may have seemed to have been some difficult sayings, some hard things to do, but understand this, God has empowered us to do what he's called us to do. So I want to take the last couple of verses in this text and share it with you. We've already been over what the Lord has said to us about loving your enemies doing good to those who hate you, blessing those who curse you, praying for those who abuse you. And we even talked about uh, to the one who strikes you on the cheek, offer the other also. And from one who takes away your cloak, do not withhold your tunic either. So today we look at give to everyone who begs from you. And from the one who takes away your goods, do not demand them back. And as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. Now, as we talked about the rest of this earlier, it seemed difficult to do these things. All right, we know that we're told to love everybody. And we kind of throw that out. We say, I love everybody. I love everybody. I love everybody. Well, we say that a lot, but yet we're not actually showing love the way we ought to show love. We're not doing the things that we really ought to do the way God told us to do it. Tell God, tell, the way God tells us to do it. But yet, if we would just do what God tells us to do, if we would just do what the Lord is saying for us to do, we'll receive the rewards that God has for us. Not just an everlasting life, but even right here on this earth. For example, when it tells us of how we ought to deal with this abuse, we talked about it last, last Sunday. When you say that um, you want to be blessed. I like to also always look at Matthew chapter 5 verse 11 says you are blessed when men shall revile you and persecute you and say all manner of evil against you false for my sake. The Bible says that the Christian response is to rejoice and be glad. King James says exceedingly glad. Why are you rejoicing and be glad? Because great is your reward in heaven and we're going to be in heaven a lot longer than we are on this earth. So we realize the things that Jesus is saying for us to do, we're doing them, we're being obedient to him because he knows what's best for us, not just in the hereafter, but he knows what's best for us now. The world needs to hear this message of how we ought to love, how we ought to live, how we ought to care for one another. And if the world can hear this message, if this world can honestly hear this message, the only way they're going to hear the message is from those of us who love the Lord. 
those who've committed our life to Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior. On this Palm Sunday, we remember the fact that Jesus went into Jerusalem. He went to Jerusalem and he's devoted to Jerusalem. He had his disciples with him. But not only did he have his disciples, he had Lazarus with him. And the text will tell us something very wonderful about this. The crowds came. And when the crowds come, you think you're very successful. So he had all these crowds coming around him, coming around Jesus. The crowds were there. Well, why were they there? Jesus had healed some. He had taken care of many of them. But he also raised one of them who was with him from the dead. And there were people there, as the word of God tells us, there were people there who wanted to see Lazarus. So here Lazarus is coming with Jesus and they're crying out to Jesus, Hosanna, 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 laying down, cutting our branches and laying them down before him. And out of all that that they're doing and all the celebration they're doing, Jesus had already said to them, when they said, well, you know what? The, the religious leaders were saying to him, why are you gonna let these people praise you like that? Why are you gonna do that? He said, if they don't do it, the rocks will cry out. I wonder, are we praising him today? Especially with the hard sayings he's given to us. It was these kind of sayings that Jesus was given that really riled up the religious folk. They were riled up. They were upset with his teaching when he was teaching them to love instead of hate. When he was teaching them to forgive instead of get back at folk. When he was teaching them the very thing that he is himself is doing and he's showing us how to do it. Oh yes, take time to go through this passage. Take time to examine yourself. Take time to say, Lord, Am I truly loving my enemies? Am I doing good to those who hate me? Am I blessing those who curse me? Am I praying for those who abuse me? And to the one who would strike me on the cheek, am I willing at least to offer the other? Am I having an attitude that I don't want ill will toward anyone? And let me tell you, in this day and time, someone have to stand up and say, I will not retaliate against what somebody has done to me. So many of our young people today killing each other on the streets of Savannah and all over because of some, what somebody said to them or did to them. But there needs to be a Christian witness, folk who would do differently than what has been done in the past. We have to be transformed by the renewing of our minds as we see in Romans chapter 12, verse 1 and 2. Paul says, I beseech you therefore by the mercies of God, you present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. And be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. That's why we've been over these passages. Hopefully there's a transformation happening in our lives. Hopefully we're trusting God. So verse 30, so verse 30 says, give to everyone who begs from you. Mm-hmm. I know, I know. You're saying, Pastor, why are they begging? They could go to work like I went to work. They, they, they able. They need, they need to give. They need to do something better with their lives. I understand that. Yes. But notice what the word of God is saying to us. Jesus says give. Now, if he said give to some of them, he says give to everyone who begs from you. Uh-huh. And the one who takes your good don't demand them back. And this goes against everything we think and everything we believe, everything we talk about. I know it. I know it. Because I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. That will never happen because God gave me good common sense. That's right. Good common sense. Need I remind you of Proverbs chapter 3, verse 5 and 6. Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own common sense. Listen, you can't give somebody something that you don't have. And whatever you have, God gave it to you. I know, I know, I know, I know, I know, I know. God, listen, God gave it to you. No, 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 I know, I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. I know what you're saying. No, you, you're saying the, the Senate approved it and the stimulus check came from the government. No. God sent it because a whole lot had to happen before that could happen. Yeah, yeah. So go ahead and give God praise right now. Go ahead and thank God for it. But my point is, if someone is begging from you and you have it, you ought to say, Lord, I thank you. <laughs> I mean, if they're begging from you, cause, cause, listen, 
you don't have to be the one that they're begging to. You could be the one begging. Jesus is saying to us, if someone is begging of you, go ahead and bless them. You ain't got to know them. No, just go ahead and bless them. Now, let me say this. All that we talked about doing, everything we talked about doing, we want it done so God's will can be done. We're not doing this just to say, oh yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm big, I got some money. Here, take this. Here, here take this. Yeah, you want some too? Here, take this. No, 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 not that attitude. It's so none could perish. So, I'm saying to us, something that we generally probably don't do, because we like to give folk money right quick if they're begging. We give them, a, I, I like to give gift cards. You, you give them something, but you're giving it to them just to get rid of them. That's the wrong attitude. In all of this, Jesus is helping us to realize God's kingdom needs to come. God's will needs to be done. His will is that none should perish. So if they're coming to you and asking you for anything, you ought to at least be able to give them what they truly need, and that's Jesus. Oh yes, we become the evangelists. We become the ones who have to tell a dying world about a living Savior. We become the ones who have to tell them, God loves you. Don't you know they're willing to listen to you? If they're asking you for something, it's a great opportunity to evangelize. We need to say, Lord, thank you that I am being used by you to tell somebody how great and wonderful you are. That's why you have it to be a blessing, because God has blessed you to be a blessing. Oh, I'll give you another example of it. There was Peter and John as they were on their way to the temple to pray. They're on their way to the temple to pray, and there's a man who's sitting there. Yeah, he's sitting there, and he's begging. He's asking people to give him arm, give me money, give me money. Everybody going in. And Peter and John stopped and said, look on us. Now, he's getting money from everybody going into the temple. And now they say, stop. He said, whoa, whoa, whoa. If, if I got to stop, that means you got something special for me. You must be giving me more money than anybody else. And the first thing out of his mouth is, silver and gold have I none. You ain't got no money and you told me to look on you? Peter broke. Got no money. Silver and gold have I none. He said, but that that I have, I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, rise up and walk. And this man who had been lame, this man who had not walked, this man who was there at the temple having to beg because he had no way to work. He had no one to take care of him. And yet, when he said, take me a bed and walk, he stood up leaping and praising God and went in the church with them. That's what I'm saying to you. You say, well, I don't have much. If somebody thinks you got something and they're asking you for it, at least give them who you have. And you have Jesus. He's telling us in a special way. Go ahead and do that. And if somebody's taking your goods and they know they're your goods, take time to use that as an opportunity to say to them, I see what you've taken, I see what you've done, but God has blessed me with so much more. I still love you. I still thank God for you. He's still making a way out of no way. Do what you can then also to give them Jesus. Don't get so caught up in yourself. Don't get so caught up in the incident. Don't get so caught up in how bad that situation was. Don't get so caught up in you got to wait for the insurance check to come back, to get back what they took. Get caught up in the fact that we are soldiers in God's battlefield and we're going to have to go through something. But when we go through something, we have to give them the word. We have to give them what God has given us. We always have news and we always have good news. Well, what's the good news? The good news is what we're celebrating. The good news is the fact that Jesus came from 40 and two generations. He came and went about doing good. And out of all the good he did, folk did talk about him. Folk did ridicule him. Folk called him everything but a child of God. But he kept on doing good. Can you see our Lord and Savior? How they treated him day in and day out. How they abused him. How they talked about him. How they tried to trick him. But look at our Lord and Savior. Even when he went to the upper room, that was his disciples. He said, one of you will betray me. And they all asked, Lord, is it I? And he said, the one that dipped with me will do it. And Judas dipped with him. Jesus said, that that you do, do quickly. Judas left. And while they were still in the upper room with the Lord's Supper, look at what happened. Judas came back and went to Jesus. After Jesus went to the Garden of Gethsemane and he kissed him. Woo! He kissed him and betrayed him at the same time. And they laid hold of Jesus. They arrested him. But look at our Lord and Savior. He didn't fight them back. As a matter of fact, Peter cut off the ear of one of the servants. And Jesus put the ear right back on. Said, he who lives by the sword will perish by the sword. That was a good time. 
If Jesus was like us, he would say, yeah, I'm glad you cut his ear. Cut another one. Cut somebody else. But no, he healed the person who was out there even to arrest him. And can you see him? They took him from judgment hall to judgment hall. They whipped him all night long. They did Jesus so badly. They talked about him. They ridiculed him. But can you see our Lord and Savior? Can you see him? I want you to see him. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Can you see it? Can you see it? Even after they whipped him, after they beat him, and after they stripped him, they put a crown of thorns on his head. They marched him up to Golgotha's hill. They put nails in his hands and nails in his feet. And he hung on the cross for all of your sins. He hung on the cross for all of my sins. And the Bible says he died. And while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Somebody say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I thank you for dying for me because I've sinned and come short. I've messed up. I've had evil thoughts. I've done evil things. But I'm so glad that you took on all of my sins. And the Bible says he died. But the story doesn't stop there. They play him in a borrowed tomb. He stayed there all night Friday. Stayed there all day Saturday. Stayed there all night Saturday night. But early I said early on that Sunday morning he got up with all power. Power over the grave. Victory over death. He ascended into heaven. Sent back the Holy Spirit to live in us and to guide us and to direct us and to bless us and to empower us to do the work he's called us to do. It's a year of action. We can do what the Lord says do. We can love our enemies. We can do good to those who hate us. We can bless those who curse us. We can pray for those who abuse us. To one who strikes on the one cheek, we can offer the other. To the one who takes away our cloak, takes away our coat, we can also give our shirt. We can give to everyone who begs from you. And to the one who takes away our goods, we don't have to demand the beg. And lastly it says, as you wish that others would do to you, do so to them. My brothers, my sisters, through this whole discourse, we never know why people do what they do. We never know their circumstance or their situations. But God is calling us to let them know that he loves them so much. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believe in him should not perish but have everlasting life. If you're listening to this message and you need the Lord in your life, we'll give you the opportunity right now to pray the prayer with me to accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Whatever else is going on in your life, Know that God loves you. Know that God cares for you. Know that God is constantly making a way in your life for you. Trust him today. The Bible says, if you shall confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God is raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. Hallelujah. Romans 10 and 9. We need salvation. If you have not accepted Christ, please pray this prayer with me right now. I can't pray it for you. You have to utter this prayer unto the Lord. So as I say these words, if that's what you believe, repeat them after me as your prayer to God, that God can guide you, strengthen you, and bless you. Say this prayer if you want to accept him right now. Father God, I have sinned. I have not been all I should be. I am sorry for my sins. I want to turn from my sins. I believe in my heart Jesus died for my sins and rose from the grave. I'm willing to trust you, God, all the days of my life. Holy Spirit, come into my life and help me to be what you want me to be. I will tell others that you saved me. Thank you, God, for saving me right now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. If you've accepted Jesus Christ, your Lord and Savior, please let us know. Contact the number that you see right there. We give God praise for you coming. Thank you so much.
we'll contact you and do what we can to help you to grow in Christ. Also, it's an opportunity to give. Please give through Givelify, G-I-V-E-L-I-F-Y. You can send your contributions. Just feel free to let the Lord lead you and guide you as you give on today. Pay your tithes and then give an offering. And keep in mind, the offering does not have to be less than the tithe. And that's correct. That's right. 10% of $1,400 is $140. God bless you as you give on today. Oh, and also others, I want you to realize also that um, you can mail your contributions in the First African Baptist Church, 23 Montgomery Street, Savannah, Georgia, 31401. We want to thank you so much for being with us on this Palm Sunday as we celebrate the fact that Jesus rode into Jerusalem. But we know that's the beginning of the Passion Week. And we want you to join us on Friday, 12 noon, uh, as we share with six other pastors in the seven last words. Join with us in the seven last words and um, just give God praise. Pray for your pastor. I have one of those seven words. And we're going to give God praise, honor, and glory. Sponsored by the Connors Temple Baptist Church and our Pastor Seals. Again, thank you for being with us. Please keep in mind all of our announcements. Please let God lead you, guide you, and direct you. Love you so much, First African. Love you, those who are joining us, all who are sharing with us throughout the world. We give God praise, honor, and glory. Let us pray. God, again, we thank you. We love you and adore you. We ask in a special way that you would be with those who are giving, that you would bless them as nobody can but you in all of our giving. Help us to trust you, Lord, knowing that when we're paying our time, give our offering, that we're giving unto you, unto the storehouse, that there may be meat in your house to do the work you've called us to do for such a time as this. God, we thank you for your word. Help us to be obedient, to love as you'd have us to love, to care as you'd have us to care, to share as you'd have us to share, to forgive as you'd have us to forgive, and to live like you'd have us to give for live. Lord, we know that when we do this, when we do our part, you will do your part. And help us to know that when we want what you want, we will get what we want. Thank you for putting those practices in place. We thank you, we love you, and adore you. And now we ask that the grace of God, the love of Jesus, and the sweet communion of the Holy Spirit would rest, rule, and abide with us now, henceforth, and forevermore. Let the people of God say amen and praise God.